Hi there, and thanks so much for joining me for another video. I'm Erin Eno, and today we're going to be making two fun Father's Day cards. So grab your paints and let's get started. So for today I'm using my Arsh cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I've turned it down to a standard card size, which is five by seven, because I am going to glue these to the face of blank cards that I got off of Amazon. You can double this width and just fold it and that can be your whole card if you'd rather do that. I just don't like to because 100% um, cotton paper isn't cheap. So I just like to do it to size. Don't let all these lines scare you. Um, for one of the cards, I want it to bleed off the border on all four sides. So I've trimmed it a little larger and I've masked off the border. And then when I'm done, I'll just trim it right to that five by seven. Okay, and I'll go over all the pencil marks in a little while uh, before we get into it. I also have my uh, Royal Talons Van Gogh paints in my palette, a jar of water and a paper towel. For brushes, I have a couple of Curry's uh, store brand brushes. I have their um, 2500 series in a size 12 round. This is uh, one of my favorite brushes now because it's just got such an awesome point on it and it holds a lot of water. And I have a size 6 round in their 2500 series. And I also have a Princeton Snap in a size 0 round for the fine details. And I also have a Raphael number two liner brush. Um, I can use these interchangeably. I just may use my liner brush because it holds more water and lasts a little longer per brush stroke, if you know what I mean. And you will also need a pencil and an eraser. And clearly, because I've drawn all these lines, you're going to need a ruler. If you're really good at hand lettering and doing it straight, then maybe you can just freehand it. I'm not blessed with that skill, nor have I developed it yet. So that is why I have all these lines. Now on this card, I'm just going to quickly do the lettering and just kind of fast forward that for you, but I will explain how I got where I got with all these lines before I do that. Um, so here, this is going to be the mountain scene card. And I know it, I just wanted to say happy Father's Day at the top. So I've just drawn in my lines where I want that to be. And I've just drawn in a center line to make sure it's centered. Then I also like to pre-draw out my lettering. So I kind of have something to go by um, as a guide for when I do write it on the card. And you just fold it like that and put it up there and that way you have a better guide. Okay. Um, as for this guy, I want a line of copy across here and a line of copy across here at the bottom. So I've just done that like equal spacing from the top and the bottom. And then I'm doing the three fishing lures here down the center. So that's why I've just drawn these lines across. I've just kind of equally spaced them apart, if that makes sense. And then just drawn a line down the center, just so I have that guide. Okay, so it looks a little overwhelming, but once you just get the lettering in, then you can just deal with spacing out the fishing lures. I just didn't want to do that in the video. I wanted to save a bit of time. So I'm going to start by writing in Happy Father's Day on this card. And like I say, I will fast forward it for you so you're not bored to tears. But this is what I mean. I just kind of eyeball that center with what I have written and then I will follow that. So now I have all my lettering done and I can see that I'm still off to the left a bit on this one and this bottom line here. Um, but that's okay. When I go to ink it in, I will just shove it a little to the right. 
I forgot to mention you're also going to need a marker for the lettering. I'm going to do this one in faux calligraphy and I'm just going to use my Sharpie uh, pen. It's a little more bleed proof than the Sharpie marker and normally I would use my Micron pens but I don't have them handy right now so this one will work just fine. And I also forgot to mention that you will need a reference for the fishing lures. I just went online and um, you can use a regular fishing lure. I like the fly fishing lures because they have these kind of feathering, feather little uh, wispy things on them. So I'm just going to use this one as a base and then we're going to do different colors. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry because I've got two cards going here. I'm kind of going back and forth so I apologize if it gets a little jumpy. But um, for the fishing lures we have the centers and I'm going to just basically draw them all the same. And I'm going to, because their tails go, um, you know, out the back, the basic kind of oval for their body is going to be a little off to the right. And I'm just going to draw a kind of oval shape for his body. And we'll lighten these lines as we get into it too. Okay, so it may look small, but like I say, all the little feathers and everything will take up more space. And then we're going to draw the hook in. And that's just going to come out and curve back around. And then you just put this kind of little spearhead on it. Okay, so I just want to make sure that these are all kind of the same size. So I'm just going to draw an imaginary line kind of down like that and then do the same thing. We'll get three of these guys in. Perfect. Okay and that's about it. Um, there is a little dip kind of almost looks like a little duck bill at the front of all of them and that's where the fishing line gets tied to I imagine. Okay, just like that. We're going to do the fish hook and the little uh, line part in ink as well. So you don't need to worry about that too much. So I'm going to lighten all my lines and then we'll get into painting. Okay, so because the mountain one takes a little bit, a little, a little bit of drying time in between, we're going to start with that one. And we're just going to do every layer of the mountains in... Um, indigo, a wash of the indigo. So I want the top edge to bleed a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to take a, like I say, a light wash and this will be our first layer of mountains. A little bit more than that. I'm using my size 12 brush as well. Okay, and you're just going to draw, draw, I always say draw, just going to paint that first layer. Okay, just in a rough shape, wavy, and go up at the sides like so. And you can just bring some of it down. Whoop. Bring it down a little bit. You don't need to bring it down all the way to the bottom of your sheet because the next layer will be going on top of this. You do need to bring it down a little bit though because we want this wet so the next layer will bleed. And then what I'm going to do to soften that upper edge is just clean off my brush, tap off the excess water, and we're just going to run a brush along that top edge just to have that soften and bleed out. Just like that. You can just go in and clean up that water on the edge. Okay, I might get a little bit of a weird bloom there but that's okay. And I'm going to wait until the sheen is gone. So it'll still be damp, but not 
sop and wet so the next layer won't bleed so much but I will just mix a little bit of a lighter wash for the indigo okay and I don't want too much water on my brush and see how this goes so the next layer is still fairly light okay again just a little rough mountain shape like that and then bring that down now the next layer we don't want to be quite so uh, fuzzy so we don't want it so wet And I don't really like this weird bloom thing I'm getting up here. I'm just going to see if I can pick some of that up without it going too odd on me. I picked it up all right. I picked it up so much it's almost gone. I'm going to see if I can fix that. Don't follow my mistakes. I'm just going to blend that out now. Hopefully you won't have this issue that I just had, but I just wanted it a little. Okay. That's good enough. Okay, so there's just a slight difference between the next layer. Probably not as much as I would like. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of a deeper color wash. Let's see if I can get that just a little bit deeper. That's a little better. And again, just bring it down. And then we're going to let this one dry just a little bit longer than that first layer. Like I say, I want the next layer to be a little fuzzy, but not as much as the first layer. And then because the next layer is going to be more pigmented, it shouldn't bleed as much anyway. But I will just hit it with my heat tool rather than wait just to speed things up. Okay, so still with my number 12 brush, we're going to go in with an even deeper indigo now. That ought to do it. And another wavy mountain shape. This one can probably come up even a little bit there. Now the next layer, I want to hardly have a fuzzy edge at all. So I don't have a lot of water on my brush, as you can hear, because I don't want it sopping wet. And then I will dry that with my heat tool. Okay, so that's pretty dry. So the next layer won't bleed much at all. And we're going to make it definitely darker, noticeably darker than the first one. Okay, so I dried that with my heat tool. Now we're going to go in and do the very last layer, which, like I say, we don't want to bleed at all. And I'm just using straight up indigo, pretty dark. Okay, so a lot of pigment, little water. And I'm just going to do the mountain shape first. Now you can switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to try this with my number 12 because it has a nice sharp point on it. If your larger brush doesn't, Definitely switch to a smaller brush 
and we're just going to go in and put in some really rough kind of tree shapes you don't have to fuss over them because they're just going to be like silhouettes you're not really going to see any detail in them So just do really rough. Don't sweat it too much. Just like that. And that's it for this card until we do the lettering. So I'll put it aside to dry. And then we'll go on to the fishing lures. And I think I'm gonna do blue, orange, and green. So I'm going to use my, well, I have to get rid of this big brush. Each little guy is going to have a little kind of feathery edge just by his face. So I'm just going to take burnt umber and a little bit of yellow ochre. Sorry, it's raw umber. And just really watered down just going to do this kind of ovally shape okay and i'm going to do that on each one only because the fishing lures that i looked up have this kind of cream color there and i do want to mimic that it's just like a feathery edge on the face, kind of the side of the face of each lure. Could be a little lighter. Just going to sop some of that. Whoops. Kind of sopped too much of it up there. So I think I'm going to use um, my cerulean blue to start. See how that goes. I might mix another color in with it. We'll see. And I'm going to start and just basically do his whole body here. Not a, quite his whole body. Leave some white at his face and just kind of get that shape of his body established. So I'm going to wet my brush and just kind of blend this out. into that oval shape. I might add a bit of viridian to that as well, just to kind of brighten things up a bit. Okay. So while he's still wet, I'm going to start to put in the little wispy feathers. I'm going to actually turn it this way. And you just draw these out and have them wave up. Some can wave up, some can wave down. As your brush dries, you can just kind of wisp them out a bit too, just like that. Okay, so you're doing a bit of dry brushing. So you can just kind of play around and have some fun. And have them come up really high and merge into his body. Okay, so you want the feathers to just kind of disappear into his body. Just like that. And you, you can just keep adding these and layering them. Because we're using such a uh, fine brush, there's not a lot of pigment going down so it shouldn't bleed too much and you should be able to just keep 
kind of adding these feathers in and then have it kind of get denser and denser where his body is. We can go in and even darken it up a little more towards his body. We're going to have some of them go really high. I'm going to get the cerulean blue again and kind of heavy it up in there where they all kind of clump together in his body. Maybe a little denser here. And as I'm painting this, I forgot one really important thing that I wanted to do before I started painting. So I'm going to dry him off and I will do that because it was a pretty important thing that I wanted to do there. But I will heavy up his body. Maybe I'll even put in a little bit of indigo just to get get him nice and deep where his body is. Just a little bit. You can play around with whatever. That's what the fun part of these little guys are. That they can be kind of wild and crazy. So I'm not using my liner brush. I don't think I'll bother using my liner brush. You can even do some little wisps coming down this way. Okay, but the really important thing that I forgot is I wanted to do some little waves in the background and I can't do that while he's wet. So I'm going to dry him with my heat tool. Okay, so he's dry enough and I'm just going to go in with some Prussian blue. I'm going to mix that over here. I just want a really light wash. And we're just going to put some little waves in. I'm just going to drag my brush back and forth just to get some light blue waves that kind of look like water. Don't know if I wanted them quite that dark. Soften them up a bit, maybe blot them up a bit so they're a little lighter. There we go. I want them fairly subtle. And these ones went a little, a little darker than I would like. I'm just going to water this down even further. So now we'll go on to the second one. Actually, now that he's dry, I'm going to put the black in that I wanted to put in. Okay, so I'm just taking straight black. And I'm just going to do a little kind of feathery, almost like a peacock feather edge on that little face part that we did. Just like that. And then you can even just put a few lines of black in his feathers just to give him a little bit of contrast. So I'm just going to clean off my brush and kind of blend that black in. Okay, so that's our first little fishing lure. So for the second lure, the orange one, 
I am using permanent red light, which is pretty orange, and I'm just following the same process, filling, his, filling in his body shape first and blending that out a bit just to soften it up and give it some dimension. And I'm going in with some Azo Yellow Medium there just to kind of brighten up that orange a little bit in some areas. And then I'm going to go in with my size zero brush and do the wispy kind of feathers all along the top and bottom as we did on the first fishing lure. And then for the darker areas on this one, I went in with um, Matter Lake Deep and you'll see me go into that soon. And there we go and start adding in some deeper little feather wisps and adding it along the top to give it some shape and dimension. And then for actually, sorry, I almost went on to the green fish, but we're not done with the orange one. I'm just putting in the black on his face like we did on the blue one. Now we're going to go in and start the green guy. And I believe I did a mixture of Hooker's Green Light and a little bit of um, Indigo, I believe it was. Just a, sorry, not Indigo, a little bit of uh, Azo Yellow Medium, just to get like a bright green. And I'm going to do, of course, the same thing with the feathers. And then for the darker areas, this is where I added a little bit of Indigo to that bright green mixture to give it the same depth and dimension that the other two had. And then of course, as with the other ones, I'm going to finish up with the black around his face. Oh, sorry. I'm just going in and adding um, some more indigo there along the top with an even darker green and just blending that out to give him some shape. Now I'm going to go in with the black and finish his face like I did the first two lures. Okay, so now that this is dry, um, I said we were going to do the lettering, but we're going to do actually the hooks and the little things that hold the fishing line first. If I can see them, I can barely see them. Okay, so I'm going to draw that little duck bill that holds the fishing line and I'm going to color it all in black. On each guy. Or the fish hooks rather, not fishing hooks. I could probably use a little bit of a thicker marker for this, but that's okay. I can maybe thicken it up without screwing it up. Okay, so the fish hooks are in now, and now we can do the lettering. And this one I wanted to move over a little bit, so I'll just go through and speed this up. I'll wait for that to dry before we erase it. Now for our mountain scene card, this is where we're going to do the faux calligraphy and I will just do one or a couple letters for you first just to show you um, what the clo 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 calligraphy, what the faux calligraphy is if you're if you don't know. Okay, so for the faux calligraphy, basically every downstroke is going to be thicker. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little thickness to every downstroke just by heaving it up and rounding it into that 
single line, just like that. Okay, so you just come down and go into that single line. I'm not the best at it, but it should look okay. So I will speed this up. Okay, I screwed that up. I heavied up both lines on the D. I shouldn't have done that. Um, but if you do that, I'm sure your dad won't mind. So I'm going to make sure that the ink is completely dry. I'm going to erase all the pencil lines and then we'll look at our finished cards. I decided to add in just a little bit of black at the top of the bottom two fishing lures just to add a little bit more contrast on those two. So here are the finished cards. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful and maybe you'll give these a try and make your own Father's Day card this year. So that's it for now. Thanks again so much for stopping by and supporting my channel and I will see you next time.